Hey folks, Michael Collins again from EnviroReporter.com on Wednesday, August 31st, 2011. What we're looking at is a kind of Japanese tea. It's called a Datan Soba Cha tea, which is made up of buckwheat and green tea as well. Uh, and we're going to, this was a uh, purchased here in Southern California by Dale Ramicone and uh, Dale was kind enough to bring us some of this and we're going to test it. Since it is from Japan and there's been problems with radiation in the teas. We're going to use our inspector again and we're going to turn it on with the sound on 100% calibrated setting it for 10 minutes we're going to open up its door. This is what the back of it looks like. See that? That's the detecting area. Don't want to get anything in there. This covering with that hinge door it's called the extreme boot. It helps protect. It helps protect the inspector. So we are going to set it off and put it on our Japanese tea. Now we've tested a couple of other teas. One's called Adlai, which is a seed of a wild grass that is steeped and um, used as a drink, hot drink, in Japan. The Adlai we tested in here tonight at Radiation Station was 39% above normal in radiation. We tested green tea that the kind of green tea that Japan's famous for and interestingly enough we almost had the same exact result 39 percent and some change above background radiation that's a significant amount above background radiation the reason it's significant is because of the probable uh, radionuclides impacting it, these teas, are probably from the Fukushima Daiichi triple meltdown that began in March 11th, 2011. While we're interested in it, besides the obvious, we care about what happens to the environment and our Japanese friends, is that you can purchase uh, these uh, items here in America at any number of places. There are about 43 Japanese uh, groceries and uh, markets in Southern California and there's uh, at least 885 Japanese restaurants. And as far as we can tell, we can't see any testing regimen for these products. Not too long ago, the Obama administration quietly shelved these massive Geiger counters that at our ports we would slowly send a cargo container through. So this was like a frame around a cargo container on a conveyor belt. Well the problem with that is with some kinds of radiation, alpha and beta in particular, you have to be right on top of the contaminated medium to be able to detect it. Alpha, half inch, inch, beta, inch and a half, two inches, you have to be on top of them. And alpha radiation can be stopped and therefore disguised with a piece of paper. So the metal of a cargo container is not going to let you look inside and find out for radiation. So quietly the Obama administration shelved the use of these 
large and very expensive machines and said that instead the folks inspecting the cargo would use handheld detectors. Now a handheld detector looks like that one right there. Do you think, uh, how long do you think it would take you to inspect one container of agricultural products, say teas, uh, with a an inspector nuclear radiation monitor. Me, I think it would take me several days. And that's having full access to it and being able to take it out of the container and uh, having enough manpower there that I could get the material out of the container and get it back into it. So then the question becomes, who's checking this stuff? Well, right now, it's us. Now, folks new to watching uh, this kind of testing might not know what a lot of you folks already know, which is that we've established a background radiation level in here with that instrument and radiation station and it is 35.8 counts per minute. And um, what we do here is, is we're running a 10 minute average on that material <coughs> in that radiation free glass mason jar lid. And uh, we're going to see if after 10 minutes the uh, T is uh, registering right around background, which would mean there was no radiation in it. Which would mean that the total count would be about 358. We're not there yet. We're not to 10 minutes yet. Then what you do is you divide by 10 and you get your counts per minute. The inspector has a margin of error of 15 percent according to the manufacturer International Medcom out of Sebastopol, Northern California. That means whatever reading you get it could be as high as 15 percent higher or it could be 15 percent lower. So if our reading comes in right about you know, close to background, well then this, uh, this T here hasn't been impacted by fallout in Japan. We're now over the background, but uh, we're, we have not uh, uh, exceeded, uh, if we were to do the plus or minus 15%, uh, take a little more to, uh, to actually truly be over background.
That signifies the end of the 10 minutes. As you probably already know, it, the uh, inspector will continue to click and flash like that, but it won't continue to add to the total. So we're going to do a quick math here. That 476 equals 47.6 counts per minute. Minus the background of 35.8. It's 11.8 extra counts per minute divided by the background equals 32.9% above background. So this tea here, while not as hot as the green tea or the Adlai wild grass seed tea, which both came in at uh, one was 39.1% over, the other was 39.4%. This is 32.9% over background and says to me that it has been impacted by a radionuclide source other than the uh, background radiation that we have here, which says to me there's a little bit of Japan in this tea, a little bit extra. You might not uh, find to your liking.